Action as well, and a Pokemon like Gastrodon loves to play around in that trick room. Absolutely. I think Tyranitar is an interesting decision here. You actually could justify bringing it despite so many major threats like Conkelder and Dracovish, uh, mainly because you know it's immune to that fake tears, but I think Eduardo might prioritize it a little bit less. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, these players have shown that they really have so much knowledge yeah. and they're so flexible with their team. So I'm so excited to see go. how this first game goes. Here we go. Game one of the Masters Finals. Gastron and Arcanine leading for Eduardo, while Marco has opted to go with the Duraludon and the Whimsicott lead. Very common leads that we've seen in the past use that fake tears to give huge boosts to Duraludon in the, in the Dynamax. Yeah, so Arcanine typically will outspeed Duraludon, so Arcanine in this position I think is often going to want to maybe click something like Snarl just mm -hmm. to decrease that special attack. And Gastron here could actually consider Dynamax. If you Dynamax the Gastron, you can immediately get some special defense boosts. Here we go. It's going to be a Dynamax to kick off this battle. Yeah, nothing like a turn one Dynamax to kick off the Masters Finals. <laughs> and it's the Slug. It's Gastrodon Dynamaxing. So Marco not opting to Dynamax the Duraludon this time around. Keeping that Dynamax option. Going to have to try and stall out the big Slug here. Whimsicott goes for the Fake Tear, is going to be able to deal a lot of damage on one of these Pokemon. Targets the Arcanine, actually, recognizing that you want to get that Snarl off the field as soon as possible. The special attack drop on Duraludon going to make sure that it is much less effective uh, than it would have been before. But if it still targets down that Arcanine, it still counts as having a few boosts here as the Draco Meteor will connect. Draco Meteor will connect, and let's see if it's enough to pick up the knockout. It hangs on! Clutch survival there. Ten and, hit points. Oh my goodness, and Gastron presumably will go for something like a Max Quake. If he goes and add Duraludon, you get a special defense boost as well from that. And there's the Max yeah. Quake coming out. Max Quake from Gastron connecting with Duraludon, hitting it on its wow. weaker defense there, the special <laughs> defense, and picks up the KO. Duraludon not Dynamaxing, so much squishier on that specially defensive side without the Dynamax. Yeah, this is an Assault Vest Duraludon too, but you can see the weakness of Duraludon even with the Assault Vest, not able to survive there. Excellent Snarl by Eduardo turn one, and I think that play covered all of his options there. So, mm -hmm. Helder is going to switch in. You know, that's why I was saying I think Gastron's a really great Pokemon in this matchup beforehand. What do you really have to deal with it in terms of damage, especially a Dynamax Gastron? Maybe, you know, some fighting type attacks from Kinkelder or Sylveon Hyper Voices, but after you get a couple special defense boosts, it's pretty much down to the physical type attack boost. So yeah. I think Edwardle's goal right now is to prioritize knocking out this Kinkelder. Uh, Gastron won't be able to, you know, get a one-hit KO on either of these two Pokemon, but I think really content to just click something like a Max Geyser or a Max Quake. Uh, Arcanine here can even stay in, go for, for example, a fire type attack into that Whimsicott. Mm -hmm. so get the Tailwind pressure off the field. Exactly, yeah, and like, for Marco, maybe you're content trading Tailwind uh, for a lot of damage here. And I think Tailwind is probably necessity for, necessity for uh, the late game here because, yeah, Eduardo just has so much strong Pokemon right now. Okay, well, Arcanine switching out to protect itself for Togekiss, going to preserve uh, the Fire-type attacks so that, and the Snarls and the Intimidate if it is that Dracovish in the back may need it if uh, Marco is able to punch through the Gastrodon by using this Dynamax Conkelder will be able to use its Max Knuckle to, con to give itself some boosts uh, in addition to a Guts boost once its Flame Orb activates. Whimsicott will be able to set up the Tailwind here, so giving a speed boost Whoa! to the entire team. And actually, just going for the Max Hailstorm, oh, that's a huge catches Togekiss on the switch. Big damage, not quite enough to pick up the KO, but that's a lot of damage. That's a really, really good prediction there. Realizes that Wardo's gonna probably want to cycle in that Intimidate. Max Quake will come out, but it's not really gonna do very much damage, especially against the Dynamax from Kelder. Yeah, wow. Kelder takes a actually a pretty good amount of damage there from the Max Quake. Uh, like you mentioned, though, the Gastrodon going to continue to just boost the special defense. Uh, so if the Sylveon's in the back, Marco's not gonna be able to deal too much damage to that Gastrodon. Huge prediction there, though. I mean, Arcanine was already pretty low. I'm not sure a Max Hailstone would have knocked out Arcanine in the range it mm -hmm. was in. So, uh, once again, that's a really great read because if Marco just goes for the Max Knuckle, which you might be tempted to go for, then Togekiss survives that pretty easily. You can go for, you know, a follow me this next turn. However, Togekiss does survive. The main thing is that a Whimsicott attack such yeah. as a Moonblast will be able to probably pick up the knockout. So right now, you could safely go for something like Moonblast into Togekiss and then just go for uh, Max Knuckle into the Gastron. And uh, even getting a single attack boost on Dynamax, uh, Conkelder is a big deal.
Yeah, and crucially, the Flame Orb activated at the end of that turn as well. Uh, so Conkelder getting the Guts boost will help it negate this Intimidate coming out from Arcanine on the switch in. So Eduardo trying to fight back and uh, reduce some of the damage coming out from Marco's side. Arcanine able to tank that Moonblast because it is a resisted hit. Just a little bit of damage while Conkelder is opting to go for Max Knuckles. Ooh. Actually double targeting the Togekiss slot. So we'll pick up the KO onto Arcanine. No more Intimidate pressure coming out and an attack boost to negate that uh, Intimidate entirely. Yeah, so doubling up onto the Togekiss there, basically covering for any switch-ins. Basically, with that play, if Togekiss switches it or stays in, you get the knockout and your Max Knuckles getting redirected towards the Gelder. That actually, after, yeah, the two Max Quakes and Burn and Hail damage it's is... good damage. It is really good damage. And of course, it's not that Assault Vest can Gelder that we often see because the Assault Vest is on the Duraludon on this team. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Gastron so far really hasn't taken any damage. And like you said, that Intimidate will basically... Uh, mitigate the attack yeah. boost let came from that max knuckle. And Tailwind's still up, so Conkelder is going before the Gastrodon, has another opportunity to pick up a KO on these Pokemon uh, before the Tailwind ends. It is going to be Tyranitar as that fourth option, though. So Conkelder has a pretty optimal matchup against Gastrodon and Tyranitar, especially because Gastrodon no longer is Dynamaxed. Mm -hmm. And Whimsicott can still go for some solid damage with something like a Moonblast. Uh, might want to consider switching out as well. One thing I have to wonder is, is the last Pokemon on Marco's end that Dracovish? Because if it is, as soon as you knock out Gastrodon, Dracovish theoretically should win. Oof. Even if you're able to get Gastrodon low, we've seen that uh, Dracovish is, not, is no slouch even when just using something like a Crunch Ooh, to deal Sylveon. some damage. But Sylveon's actually the final Pokemon. So all of those max Quake boosts are going to make it much more difficult for Marco to break through Gastrodon. Tyranitar just trying to protect itself for this final turn of Dynamax from the Conkelder. Who's it targeting? Oh, it goes oh. into Tyranitar! Into the Protect. Tyranitar is still four times weak, but because of the Protect, not going to take the maximum amount of damage. Conkelder gets off the attack there. Another attack boost activates the weakness policy from Tyranitar. Now Gastron's going to be able to get off an attack, and soon this Tailwind is going to expire as well as the Conkelder's Dynamax which is actually really good for Marco. Yeah, and I think Sylveon, an excellent fourth Pokemon to have out here, especially with spread Hyper Voice. He's able to uh, chip away enough at the Gastronaut at this point, and that's does so much damage to Tyranitar, even through the Protect. So uh, Sylveon exerting an immense amount of pressure right now with Hyper Voice. Like, Togekiss in the back won't be able to do that much damage, especially without the ability to Dynamax. And Marco mm -hmm. actually conserved his Whimsicott, so he could still set up a Tailwind later on uh, once Conkeldur faints here. So I think Marco is actually in a tremendous position, and. This is one of the reasons why Conkelder has been such a high priority pick throughout the course of this metagame, specifically for its ability to deal with Tyranitar because you pressure with Mach Punch even after Tailwind, for example, expires. So right now I think uh, Marco can definitely click the Hyper Voice button with Sylveon. He has a bunch of decisions to go with with Conkelder. Can maybe swap out back into the Whimsicott or maybe you just sacrifice it here so you get a free switch and back into the Whimsicott and get another Tailwind off and close the game off with Whimsicott and Sylveon. All right, Marco having to decide an end game here. Eduardo just going to protect Gastrodon from any damage coming out from Marco's side, like that Hyper Voice from Sylveon. So the Hyper Voice connects on to the Tyranitar, which took all the damage from Max Luck Knuckle earlier, easily able to pick up that KO. So Conkelder sticking around this turn. The Protect Prevent... Oh! oh! The side drain punch to survive the sand and burn damage here. So Conkelder gets to survive for a few more turns. Yo, that was good. Yeah, but that's so much damage on the Sylveon now, and Eduardo does have the Togekiss, and we know it's the Scope Lens Super Lux set as well, so we'll have to see how fast the Sylveon is relative to this Togekiss. I mean, it is super low, so if you have the priority, uh, like a Quick Attack, for example, maybe a Quick Attack and a Mach Punch will be able to get the knockout. I don't think a Mach Punch from Conkelder is knocking out Togekiss. I'm not even sure a Quick Attack from Sylveon is able to pick it's up that It's gotten a lot of max knuckle boosts. That's true, yeah. And it's got... <laughs> you saw how much damage it did to Sylveon. It did a lot of damage <laughs> to Sylveon, that is correct. So we'll have to see. I mean, that is a clever way, and self-targeting obviously is not a very, very common attack. Togekiss is obviously heavily damaged, so it is pretty close to getting knocked out. Oh, it's going to be a close finish, but I think Marco still is uh, has the advantage right now. I mean, we know that uh, the Togekiss here doesn't have Protect, so you can freely target that slot. I think Gastron's obviously going to be attacking, even though they didn't Protect. And, oh, Conkelder going for a Protect here. Okay, Conkelder did all of that work to heal back oh, up. Sylveon's faster. Sylveon's faster than the Togekiss, though, so Hyper Voice picks up the KO, and that's a lot of damage with a critical hit onto Gastrodon through all of those Max Quake boosts. 
Eduardo goes for the Skull, connects with the Sylveon, so able to pick up the KO there after Sand here. It's a big deal that the Sylveon there is faster than the Togekiss, though, mm -hmm. naturally. And uh, maybe that was information that the players already knew going into this. So, yeah, hey, self Drain Punch there, definitely a cool play. I think it actually makes a lot of sense in so many different ways, too, because, like, you can uh, eventually, if one thing gets knocked out, you can get the switch into Whimsicott and just set up a Tailwind there. But yeah, yeah the fact that uh, the Sylveon there is able to just outspeed Togekiss, get that Hyper Voice off, now you can very safely click Tailwind, Whimsicott, Drain Punch, and a Gastron, the game is just over. So really, really interesting and cool plays from both ends, I think, in this game. And Marco made some phenomenal predictions, especially the Max Hailstorm into the Togekiss. And you see the power of Kinkelder. That's one of the reasons why earlier I was saying maybe Tyranitar is a little weak in this matchup. But let's see if Gashon can maybe stall out the, uh, <laughs> the Kinkelder right now. Actually didn't go for the Tailwind here, just the Fake Tears and Drain Punch. Both of those into Gastrodon's Protect here. Uh, so should Eduardo go for the Double Protect here, would be able to pick up the KO on Kinkelder unless it goes for another side drain punch, which might buy a little bit more time. Yeah, it's side drain punch here. This is actually again. A, weird, a weird position to be in. Yeah, it's like definitely a potential play to make, but like if you side drain punch yourself, you like crit the Whimsicott and you knock yourself out, that would be a disaster. But Gashron goes for the double. Do we see another side? Let's see, it's gonna be fake just to kick things off. Yeah, Whimsicott gets the fake tears off onto the Gashron. Does not get the double protect, <laughs> so drain punch connecting to, to Gashron will pick up that KO. Marco is going to get a game one victory here using the big brain plays to keep that Conkelder alive that and was, firing off against that Gastrodon. That was so cool. And, uh, you know, when he first went for that play, I was like a little bit nervous because I was like, there is an offensive Togekiss yeah. in the back. If that is faster, I mean, maybe you can just start doing some damage. But uh, key thing here is in the end, Sylveon was able to outspeed that Togekiss, able to get that Hyper Voice off. So really cool play there from Marco. I think I like the approach Eduardo went in this game with as well. Uh, but you see where Gastron kind of, uh, kind of falls off a little bit. I think Kelder mm -hmm. has proven its damage output against Eduardo's entire team. And that's kind of why before we started this match, I was thinking Durant could be a really interesting pick because if you Dynamax it, even if you're not getting KOs, you can get some max steel spike boosts, right. get those defense boosts, which helps out immensely against Kelder. So I think for Eduardo's end, you might want to consider bringing in that Durant and Dynamaxing it in the second matchup. I also think Tyranitar really didn't provide that much value in that last game, and mm -hmm. the main reason is because Kinkelder just pressures it so much the entire time. So Especially Dynamax. Exactly. So Eduardo needs to go back to the drawing board and consider how do I beat a Dynamax Kinkelder? Because that's a Pokemon that, you know, I think on these team compositions like Duraludon off the Dynamax, you saw Marco made a really smart play on that first turn, choosing not to yeah. Dynamax that Duraludon. Uh, it, you can see like he clearly had a kind of a long-term game plan in the set. All right, well, Eduardo is the defending international champion. So if he knows how to come back, if anyone knows how to come back from a deficit, it's him. He's going to have his work cut out for him. Falling in game one, going to need to make some big plays here to advance uh, to advance to a game three and keep the tournament hopes alive. Otherwise, Marco will be taking home the championship title here. And really importantly, that last game, the Dracovish did not come out. Yeah. Of course, seeing that Gastrodon on Eduardo's side makes it very difficult to bring that Pokemon. So Marco deciding, I'm not even going to worry about trying to play around the Gastrodon with my Dracovish. I have other win conditions. I'm not going to worry about it. And I think Sylveon was an immensely clutch pick there in the end, able to get spread Hyper Voices off yeah. against all these things that really don't resist it. So it also speaks to why I would like to see Durant in this matchup, given Marco's heavy prioritization towards Whimsicott, Duraludon, Conkelder, and Sylveon. Yeah. Look at him, I mean, Durant has a really good matchup against all of that, actually. So uh, we'll see if Marco makes the prediction, expects Edu to maybe bring the Durant and switches things up by perhaps bringing in the Rotom Heat. Oh my goodness, though. That was, <laughs> those were some really cool plays, I think, from both ends. I mean, I, we have to point out Marco going for the Max Hailstorm prediction on the Tokyo yep. switch in, and of course the self drain punch. But I think Eduardo going for some really safe and consistent plays earlier on. But in the end, it felt like Marco had the edge because his Pokemon were just a little bit stronger, and he made some really nice predictions to propel him to the top of that first game. Yeah, got some good calls on the switches. Got some good damage spread out, even though Gastron was boosting itself up in the Dynamax. It was able to take out the Duraludon, but other than that, uh, Dynamax Gastron, not a huge offensive threat, mostly just to get those boosts here. So it looks like Edu is very happy to lead with the exact same, with the Arcanine and Gastron, this time catching the Sylveon and Rotom Heat from Marco. Yeah, so Rotom Heat, maybe the mix-up here predicting a potential Durant somewhere in the back, but mm -hmm. I think here, 
You now have the ability on Eduardo's end to just click Snarl, which is really great against yeah. both of these special type attackers. They really won't be doing very much damage. Gastron no big cheer support. To, exactly. Uh, Gastron can Dynamax, go for Max Quake, and get continuous special defense boost. So, I mean, the main question, once again, is like Gastron is a pretty good Pokemon to Dynamax in this matchup. You just have to deal with the Conkeldur a little bit better. And maybe Eduardo is saying, okay, I still have the tools to deal with that. I just need to make sure that my Token Kiss hangs on for a little bit longer this time around. Okay, well, there's Conkeldur switching in favor of the Rotom Heat as Eduardo switches out Gashadon for Togekiss. A good Pokemon to have out against this Conkeldur. Arcanine just goes for a safeguard, so trying to avoid any potential uh, status effects from Marco's side, but it's not going to be status, it's just going to be damage. Hyper Voice connecting with both the Togekiss and the Arcanine. That's a lot of damage with Hyper Voice there, yeah. too, especially because of the lack of a Snarl. One thing that I wanted to talk about before this game started was I thought uh, Togekiss is also a pretty good candidate to Dynamax, especially because of its matchup specifically against Kinkelder. But mm -hmm. uh, getting all that damage off before a potential Dynamax, I think, is a really big deal. Especially Basically double value. Exactly. And I mean, if Kinkelder chooses to Dynamax here, um, perhaps a Max Hailstorm will be able to just knock out the Togekiss here. So I think that makes the option of Dynamax and Togekiss a little bit more difficult. And the Safeguard really not doing very much on that first turn, but Conkeldur actually opting for the switch out here. Another switch out, so Conkeldur switches in favor of Rotom on Marco's side. Here comes the Snarl finally on Sylveon and Rotom. High value Snarl dropping the special attack of both Pokemon on Marco's side. Uh, so those Hyper Voices aren't going to be dealing as much damage as they did before. You can see the effect of the Snarl immediately on both those Pokemon. Togekiss just going to be able to fire back with a Dazzling Gleam of its own. Not quite a Hyper Voice, but does get the critical hit on Sylveon. Yeah, and Togekiss has taken so much damage at this point where you're thinking, I mean, I don't think it's going to Dynamax. And I think Marco making a proactive play, realizing, okay, Conkelder is the only way I can really beat that Gastron, so I just mm -hmm. don't want to risk getting KO'd by anything. Might as well switch in Rotom. Rotom, actually, I think one of the best Pokemon in this format, really, to have out against both the Togekiss and Arcanine. So I think that's a great switch. And once again, Sylveon being faster than Togekiss is just such a big deal here. Yeah, oh. showing, showing that Sylveon's faster than Togekiss means that uh, there's only so much that Eduardo can get off uh, before taking that big damage from Hyper Voice. May just be able to get more Snarls as Marco is just going to retweet the Rotom Heat again. Brings out the Conkelder, so Marco doing a lot of switching of partner Pokemon next to Sylveon. Eduardo doing the same for the partner to Arcanine. It looks like Marco got the matchup that he wanted. Conkelder back out again against the Gastrodon. But this time, Arcanine just goes for offense, picks up some damage on the Conkelder with that flamethrower. Actually pretty decent damage, which will start adding up thanks to the burn as well. Yeah, that's a lot of damage like you mentioned, and that is one of the approaches to knocking out the Conkelder if you're able to do all this damage before it Dynamaxes, yep. like you were just saying, that makes it just so much less effective. But this is a really interesting game. I mean, we are a few turns in and neither trainer has opted to Dynamax yet. And once again, I feel like Gastron is still a really good candidate for Eduardo to Dynamax, but he is slowly taking a lot of damage on all of these Pokemon. So he's going to want to make sure to conserve it. And Togekiss is also getting chipped away, so won't get that much more utility other than maybe a potential follow me later on. Still have to wonder what the last Pokemon on Eduardo's end is as well. If it is something like that Tyranitar, then you know your goal is to definitely just knock out Conkeldur as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And there, I think in each turn, there's been the potential to Dynamax, but both players are kind of playing the waiting game to see if their opponent Dynamax is first. Yeah, and who's going to blink? Yeah, let's see. No Dynamax once again. Actually, a Protect coming out from Eduardo's Arcanine. So no Flamethrower, no Snarls, no Switches. Hyper Voice from Sylveon connects with Gastrodon. So going to deal a little bit more damage oh, right back. Drain and punch. the Drain Punch going to go to connects the with the Protect. So good call there from Eduardo protecting oh. the Gastrodon. And Gastrodon now able to get off a Recover healing back all of the damage that Sylveon has been able to do with those Hyper Voices, while Conkelder starts continuing to whittle away at its health pool with that burn. Oh, that was a huge play for Eduardo. I Big mean, if recover. the Drain Punch goes into that Gastron, probably just gets the knockout there. Yeah. So, wow, uh, Gastron being able to heal all the way back to full. And that's one of the ways you can get around taking some chip damage before you Dynamax. Mm -hmm. Just heal it, and now you can click the Dynamax button. So What we'll chip damage? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think like both players have been smart about not Dynamaxing either. Just waiting to see. And if, if there's any time, I think Gastron could Dynamax now. Ooh. So let's see if it is finally time for a Dynamax. Okay, well, Sylveon, or, yeah, Sylveon switches out for Rotom Heat as well as Togekiss <laughs> coming in for Eduardo. Gastron actually just going for the Protect here trying not to take any damage from uh, Marco's Pokemon. Ooh. But Conkelder actually just going for the Drain Punch on Togekiss doesn't deal a lot of damage because of the resistances. Heals up a little bit, probably just about enough to uh, ignore the burn damage for one turn. 
Yeah, I was thinking maybe you could go for the Dynamax onto Rotom and target the Conkelder, but I think one play that Eduardo has to be scared of is, of course, Conkelder just hard switching out into Rotom. Uh, one way you could get around that is actually, I guess, clicking Max Geyser instead. But Togekiss is now out, has redirection support, so you can go for something like a Follow Me. But I think mm -hmm. Rotom can very easily click Thunderbolt into that slot without much problem. And Conkelder now being able to move before the Gashma can get a really, really big Drain Punch off there. So I think that last turn was maybe an opportunity for Eduardo to get some more damage onto the Conkelder, but wanted to get a free switch in, I think. But Marco keeping up the momentum. Nice uh, decision to switch onto the Rotom. And finally, we're going to see a Dynamax. We had the first. Dynamax of this second game. Coming out actually much deeper into the match than before. It's going to oh. be the Rotom Heat on Marco's side. So the big toaster oven out here has a pretty poor matchup against the Gastrodon, um, but able to deal a good amount of damage to the Togekiss with this Max Lightning. Easily able to pick up the KO on Togekiss with only the 40 hit points. No follow me's though, so... Uh, that was an accurately targeted attack. Conkeller able to get off an attack on this Gastrodon now. I have to wonder if Duran said Wordo's last Pokemon. He's been playing it kind of like it is, honestly. Yeah. We'll see Drain Punch do a lot of damage in the Gastron, but oh, Whoa. big, big chunk there. Yeah, that's a huge chunk of damage onto Gastrodon. And even worse, that's going to heal Conkeller all the way up to almost full. Rotom taking just a little bit of damage, enough to activate the berry here, heal up. So yeah, you're. You're exactly right. Eduardo seems to be playing as if he has Durant in the back as the final sweeper, but that Rotom Heat's going to need to go down before it can come out. Yeah, exactly. That actually might be the reason why Marco actually decided to conserve that Rotom Heat, realizing, okay, yeah. Eduardo might have Durant in the back, and if he does, I don't I lose my Rotom Heat. How am I beating Durant? And there's really no way, even if I Dynamax can kill or Sylveon. So this has really been a fun set, I think, of uh, both players making some really impressive plays and once again showing the flexibility of Dynamax and choosing not to just aggressively Dynamax. And there is the Durant! Cool. Okay, well, Durant switching in against the Dynamax, the Rotom, Heat, and Conkelder alongside Gastrodon. We saw that uh, Eduardo sometimes uses the Durant as a follow me Pokemon, but I think he <laughs> might need to get a little bit more out of it this time if he wants to force a game three. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the Max Rockfall on the Durant, I think it's a pretty easy decision to go for the Dynamax and Max Rockfall. Otherwise, I think you might want to consider Dynamaxing and maybe protecting. I don't know. It's just weird because you know that the Conkelder is faster than the uh, Gastron. So here, Marco has a really safe play where you just go for Max Flare into yeah. Durant and Dream Punch. And I think really, like, there's not much way around that. So. Let's see if Durant does have that max Rockfall. All right. Durant has oh. Dynamax. It's just Steel Spike. That's going to connect with the Conkelder. Pick up the KO there. So keeping the Gastrodon uh, alive and healthy. Might be using a Dynamax Follow Me here to help that Gastrodon get <laughs> a little bit more protected from whatever Pokemon Marco has in the back. And it's max that's Flare. the Max Flare. That's easily going to pick up the KO onto Durant. So. Gastrons and this Arcanine going to have to do a lot. We still don't know what the fourth Pokemon is that Marco has brought. Marco's decision to Dynamax his Rotom was so smart because that also sets up the sun now, so let's stall from Gastron this less damage. I think it's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why and he go, Gastron goes for recover, so I mean you have knocked out the physical attacker, which is the Kinkelder, so yep. I mean Gastron could maybe stall us out, but Eduardo just doesn't have very much damage at this point. He's down to Arcanine and Gastron. We know these are pretty bulky Pokemon as well. And I just think it's so smart on Marco to Dynamax this Rotom, especially uh, keeping that in mind that Durant was probably in the back. And the, the lack of a max yeah. rockfall means that it's a lot tougher to knock out this Rotom Heat. Okay, well, Arcanine is out. The Intimidate hits the Sylveon and the Rotom Heat. So if Marco did bring the Dracovish, not going to be intimidated uh, by Arcanine a little bit later on. These are Eduardo's final two Pokemon. His last stand here in the Oceania International Championships, facing down the Rotom and the Sylveon. I think here Arcanine's almost always clicking Snarl, which yeah. it is, and I think you probably go for like a Max Darkness Hyper Voice on Marco's end, as Gastron either you know, just tries to chip away more with damage, maybe hold for a Skull Burn, Earth Power Special Defense Drop. Could click Recover as well to deal with the Snarls that you know, or, or the damage that you know is coming out this turn. Actually, Max Darkness targeting down the Arcanine. Marco trying to get that Snarl off the field as soon as possible. Gets those special defense drops as well, which are basically counteracting the Snarl that Arcanine just pulled off. Big Hyper Voice oh, oh. damage on both Pokemon, Arcanine and Gastrodon. And an Earth Power from the Gastrodon connects with Sylveon, not able to pick up the KO even close. 
I think uh, Max Dark is definitely the best move to go for there because, you know, you can still switch out right now on Marco Zen. So the goal is basically knock out the Arcanine and then Gashadon can't really effectively deal with all Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, we, like you said, we haven't even seen Marco's last Pokemon. And once again, just such a clever decision to Dynamax the Rotom Heat in this matchup. It, and it was, you know, kind of both players drawing it out, vying for the position that they want, and in the end, Marco said, you know what, I think now is the position for Rotom Heat to kind of just sweep through everything. So, Fred Wardo's end, you could click Snarl once again, but if you click Snarl, Arcanine will just faint, so maybe you consider protecting the Arcanine here, getting a critical hit with Gastronon. Mm -hmm. uh, but the question is, can Gastron even hang on from a Hyper Voice? There is the Protect, though. All right, Arcanine's Protect here to avoid getting knocked out by the Hyper Voice or this Thunderbolt from the Rotom. Uh, Sylveon does go for the Hyper Voice, going to be in Incredibly important if this Gastrodon can survive this damage. It deals oh. a lot, does not get the survive. Sylveon picks up the KO. Marco in an absolutely commanding position to become your next Oceania International Champion. Yeah, he's got to be able to taste it now. There's pretty much nothing Eduardo can do to beat the combination of Rotom and Sylveon. Not to mention Marco still has another Pokemon in the back. The flamethrower into the Rotom Heat. Arcanine trying its very best, but it's not going to be enough. Rotom's Thunderbolt did so much damage this entire match, and that's going to be it. Marco Silva is your new Oceania International Champion in the Masters Division.